let's just exactly. kind of like uh, put this in in, a, in in the way we, we were just speaking. In other words, we were talking about a loop, right? That uh, somehow consumption uh, uh, allows people to have income, which allows them to consume again. And then now we're saying that uh, people that have uh, larger incomes can't consume that amount. And so that income comes off out of the stream. And so then the stream is diminished somehow. And, right. and, uh, and somehow we have to pump it back up. So what are they going to do with that money that's excess? Well, they're going to put it in a bank. And a bank is created to, uh, by laws that say there's a thing called interest. And that uh, if they take that money and, and let people use it, uh, we say they can have some interest, and that interest is another thing that's pulled off the stream. Exactly, and then it that, goes to those lending, yeah, and yeah. people maybe also invest in stock, and then uh, if they get a dividend off the stock, that's more money that comes out of this this right. loop or this circle. And we're saying that well, well maybe eventually they put it back in. Uh, in fact, they put it back in right away. Probably when they get money, they put it in the bank, and supposedly it's invested somehow, and they get more interest. So then there's a positive feedback loop where they where their uh, excess income actually becomes more excess. And right, exactly. And and so this idea that that those incomes normally go to investment um, kind of breaks down because investment isn't merely just finding new ways of doing things. It's simply applying the old ways of doing things in a larger scale. You just simply build another factory just like the old factory or, or much like the old factory. But to do that, you also have to have demand from consumers who, wanna, who want to uh, buy the goods that that factory would produce. And that's where structural debt becomes really important because once, once you get to the point where you're producing enough in the existing factories that to meet all of consumer demand, the incentive to invest in new factories falls off you know, dramatically. And now the uh, the banks and the inter financial intermediaries are left to find new borrowers that, that aren't interested in investment at all. They're, they have to find someone else who will borrow those funds that are collecting in this concentration of wealth. And uh, originally, <coughs> uh, this problem became very acute, and maybe earlier too, but it certainly uh, it's clear it became acute in the 1920s, where... Uh, they were basically loaning funds to to any anybody who wanted to trade in the stock market, so they could buy on margin. So they didn't even you didn't even have to have any funds to be able to invest in the stock market. The bank was happy to loan you uh, a margin account and let get you started investing in stocks. And that helped, of course, you know, cause the stock market uh, bubble in the 1920s, which collapsed in 1929. And that was the first way of trying to find an outlet for this structural debt. Um, and then after the stock market crash, <clears throat> then economists put forth the idea that we could use the government could, to take on this, uh, this structural debt. They could borrow. And uh, as long as they borrowed, uh, they, they could borrow where the debt would grow and grow, but as long as it grew slower than the economy, they told us anyway that we shouldn't be concerned, that it would always be a shrinking, the debt would always be a shrinking proportion of the, of the total output, even though it was growing as well. Um, and of course, later that we started to realize that maybe growth wasn't something that could go on forever, and and we should be we shouldn't just be pursuing growth for growth's sake, um, and so that created some problems there. So in other words, wealth became concentrated because it was there was a mechanism to siphon some off, right? right. First of all, people were making more money through ownership; they were making more money than they could possibly spend, and so then that accumulated uh, capital, and then that capital not going to just put it in your mattress. They had to develop banking systems and stock systems and places to put that. Right. And that just kept fe feeding more into that uh, excess capital, let's call it. You know, not a bad thing or not a good thing. We don't know what it is. It's just a state that there was, a, there was excess money there that wasn't being spent. And so then it got to a point where for the products that we know how to make today, there's no need for any extra factories. You know, and then some people are working on new products, new generations, and of course nowadays they're doing it a lot. But I mean, okay, at a certain time they weren't really that fast at new, in new innovations. So then they still had gobs of money that they that they they weren't going to build a factory with. And what are they going to do? So then they started to uh, say, okay, well the government could issue debt and we could buy that and make interest on that, so that this money, this excess capital, was working somehow. Then investment vehicles are actually created for that. And then those investment vehicles somehow uh, allow that excess wealth to work in a sense. Now, it might not be working in what we call a productive economy. 
it might be working in, in trading schemes and uh, back and forth schemes where not much value is really added.